Greetings Hive fans, Randy Ingersoll here with another video helping you play Hive like a champion. This is a live stream of a game from the round robin section of the 2022 Hive Online World Championship. This is Group D, the top two seeds in Group D, Frasco92 versus Judoka, two well-known Hive players in the worldwide community playing today in the first game of the round robin. Of course, this tournament is set up this year with uh, eight sections with four players in each section that were 32 people were invited. The top, the top two in each section will continue on to the uh, knockout rounds leading to the World Championship Finals later on in the summer or early fall. So we've got great action going on. Let's go ahead and get the lobby open. We'll see what's going on in the lobby. We have Frasco and Judoka both in the lobby looking to uh, play in game room one. So hopefully, let's see, we should be live here very shortly, I would think. So we should be up and running. And of course, there is a two minute delay uh, to minimize the opportunity of the uh, players joining in, although neither one of these players, I have a concern about that, but we always like to, to do that with a video. Okay, it looks like my video, my live stream is up and going. I just wanted to check on it. Welcome, make sure you drop me a note. Uh, let me know who you are, where you're from, if you've joined with me before. Hopefully we'll be joining here very soon as we determine where they're going to play. Frasco gets, as the top seed in this group, gets to play white in game one and game four. It's a four-game match. Each of the four players in the group, it's a round robin play four games against each of the other players. There's 12 games will be played in each group with the top two players advancing on, as I mentioned. And so there's some conversation going on between Fresco and Judoka. Fresco says, Ola. Judoka asks, are you ready? Fresco says, yep. So we should be having Hive here very soon. So I'm, I'll have two rooms going on here, a spectate room, which is live, and then a commentary commentary room, which will be, see if I can get it going here. One of these days I'm going to get it figured out. This is the commentary room up here. I'll be, we'll have a live room going here as quickly as I can get it figured out. So bear with me a minute. Both players opened with ladybugs. Mosquitoes. So let's see if I can get window on room one open. This is my replay room here. That's the big room. Let's see what I can do here to get this figured out.
go. This is also being a review room down here. So let me see if I can get this in to make it into a the actual game room over here. So bear with me one minute. There we go. I think I've got it open here. Okay, let me... Hey, hey, we've got some people joining us in the lobby. Welcome. Again, there's a two minute delay. Uh, so the comments that I, if I interact with you on the comments on my channel, uh, there, that'll happen a little bit early. And there is a thunderstorm alert. It is summer here in Florida and we've got a lot of thunder and lightning going on. So if I flash out, you'll know what happened. So let's see if I can quickly get the room up to speed here. I'm going to add a text that says Okay, so that's the live live room down on the lower left hand corner, and the comment room is upper up is is the big one right here. So I'll be trying to comment as we're going along and keep it an eye on what's happening as well. Of course, this is a timed game. Uh, it's twenty minutes plus twenty seconds per turn, so that means that each player started with twenty minutes, and then. As they make a turn, they'll get at 20 seconds added, added on. Make sure my volume seems to be good. Anybody having an issue, make sure you drop me a, a note. And I will try very hard to respond to any kind of notes that are put in the in the chat. Okay, and, and as expected, in many of these games, you'll see that uh, the powerful bugs come out first. Mosquitoes, ladybugs, pill bugs, ants, because the ants can run around the outside of the hive, and we have both players doing that. And we've got ants doing what ants do best, and that's pinning other ants, or in this case with Frasco's pinning Judoka's Mosquito. 
Of course, it's okay to do that because the mosquito doesn't have pill bug power. Okay, I've got to see if I can make this room just a tad smaller. So I can get both of my windows open at the same time, and then I'll enlarge it over here. Welcome to the Lone Badger from Bielefeld in Germany. We appreciate having you joining us today. We've got eight concurrent viewers. We appreciate everybody joining. And we've got exciting hive going on. Two champion caliber players. We've got world champion, previous world champion twice, Judoka, playing against Frasco 92. Frasco 92 is the higher ranked of the two players in this uh, tournament. So he's playing white in game one. And it looks like Judoka might be considering, and he does bring in the third ant. So all the ants, both mosquitoes, both ladybugs are in. Frasco does not yet have a pill bug in play. So most of the powerful bugs are already in play. And of course, if you'll notice that Frasco did open with a buffered opening, where Judoka opened with a standard opening with the Ladybug Mosquito adjacent to the Queen, two good defenders. And we'll see if Frasco at this point takes the opportunity to bring in the Pillbug. Notice with the uh, buffered opening, there is no place that Black can move this ant and stop the white pill bug from coming in in good defensive position. So wherever the ant goes, the white pill bug can come in. And of course, as, as Joe Schultz, the author of the book, Canon of Hive Groundwork, he has a second book in the works. It should be coming out very soon, entitled The Canon of Hive Openings. And he coined the term uh, qualifying for the win. And of course, that means neutralizing the opposing pill bug in order to uh, deliver the victory. And the most common way to neutralize it, of course, is with the a beetle atop the hive. And so the white pill bug comes in. And now... If the black ant attacks, uh, the white pill bug is still in a good defensive position. Of course, you're always looking for an opportunity to bring in your beetles. So, for example, if the white mosquito were moved to here, that would be create a beetle factory right there. So the white mosquito could also be looking to pin the black ant possibly opening a beetle factory, but then the black ant could swing over and shut the beetle factory down. So Judoka, playing for control of the outside of the hive, pins the white ant up against the black mosquito. So right now, black has two ants free, white has one ant, and the white mosquito. Of course, it's always a good idea to try to keep your mosquito uh, mobile and with ant power. Then if, you're opposing, if your opponent brings in a beetle, the white mosquito can immediately pin the, the opposing beetle. That's interesting. Frasco plays an attacking beetle. And Judoka very quickly responds by moving the pill bug over, which frees up the black mosquito. And with ladybug power, it has very good 
um, mobility around the inside of the hive. So if the white beetle attacks, then the black mosquito may be in a good defensive position. what might be interesting happening here for Frasco would be to just go ahead and cover his own pill bug and then he could get the mosquito up as well. You run the risk when you cover your own pill bug. This early it's not generally an issue. Oops, there we go. I gotta keep make sure I don't do that. If you cover your own pill bug then of course the pill bug doesn't have the ability to warp out your queen and it loses some of its defensive situation. Let's see, my Okay, I'm I'm gonna take a brief moment here and open my iPad and make sure that my video looks good. And remember there is a two minute delay. Uh, so let's get YouTube open. Get my live. Of course, I have to watch my ad. I do make a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of money with my YouTube channel. Okay, it looks good. Don't forget, drop me a note in the chat section. Let me know who you are and where you're from. And we did have some action here. The white beetle did attack. I am going to change this option here. So we're using text. I like the text rather than the uh, visual. Make sure everything is up to date, which it is. And of course, in this position with the white beetle attacking, it is possible for the ladybug to jump out. But in, which would then leave the white beetle pinned. But Judoka, possibly a feint, but maybe the real thing moved his ladybug to there, looked at moving the ladybug to there which would keep the beetle pinned. And if the beetle ever does move forward, the mosquito would have beetle power and good defensive position. And of course, we, all, we, we really like Dave Dyer, the administrator at Board Game, at Board Space. He's always looking for ways that he can improve the interface. And he just recently added to Hive a no, no done Right now you have to, when you're finished moving your bug, you have to click done. You can go up here to options and choose automatic done. And then uh, you don't have to click done. and You don't have the ability to move the bugs around and set them in place and look at them. More like if you were playing uh, in person and live. More like a, a you touch it, you move it rule in chess. So Frasco's attacking first with the beetle. Let's see if Judoka can come up with a good defense. Right, currently neither player is in danger time trouble. We've got 16 minutes for Frasco, 15 minutes for Judoka. And of course, each time they make a move, it adds 20 seconds. But there, I've been watching some of the games in the board space open and some of the games that have already played uh, in the tournament. And there does, uh, there are times when uh, time is a factor. Greetings to Jonas from Sweden. Welcome, Jonas. So Judoka moves the queen out. 
allowing the ladybug to move, I'm sorry, allowing the beetle to climb atop the hive. So let's see what his defense is here. Early in the game, you have to be very careful. You don't have a scenario where a beetle is available to move atop the hive and attack, but is so far away that the tempo take, taken to do that allows your opponent to do quite a bit of other things. So it, as always, it's a constant balance between the three keys of hive. The three keys of hive, of course, being strength, mobility, and tempo. Making sure you have enough pieces to win, making sure they're mobile, and then counting your tempo to make sure that you have time to do it. And so the white beetle advances forward. Now, does Judoka have a defense here to stop the white beetle from moving forward? And of course, one of the, th oh, there we go again. I got to figure out how to, I need to buy a mouse or actually take one of my mouses and wreck the, the wheel on it. Okay, interesting. Judoka plays a spider looking more than likely to do a pin replacement, freeing up the white, the black ant. And remember there is a two minute delay. I don't have that displayed on my stream. Now that's interesting with Brasco's grasshopper coming in. Oh. The spider did not do a pin replacement. Instead, it pinned the grasshopper. But the white mosquito could jump all the way out to here, pinning the black ant and opening it up the beetle factory. Granitar MC says, greetings from Florida. Where in Florida are you? I'm in Daytona Beach. I'll type something in over here. And while I was looking to see what happened, the black spider came in and a white spider came in, freeing the ladybug as well. Thank you very much for your comment, Metal Russo. Welcome, welcome to the Hive community. And I want to I want to keep an eye on my chat window and interact with you guys, but I have to be very careful because I don't want to lose out on something going on here in the game. Try to keep everything up to date here. So Judoka is definitely on the defensive right now with the white beetle already atop the hive. Okay, very interesting. This black spider warps over into here, which frees the mosquito. So if the white beetle moves forward, 
and all these black bugs stay in their position, the white beetle did move forward, then the black mosquito will immediately cover the white beetle if it advances. Okay, the judoka moves the pill bug away. You don't want the white beetle to have that easy a time to cover the pill bug. So we have at least one other hive player in Florida. We've got Granitar MC from Northwest Florida up in the Panhandle near Pensacola. Of course, up na us native Floridians down here in the peninsula part of Florida just refer to that as LA, Lower Alabama. So is Frasco going to continue moving the beetle? Nope, the mosquito jumps out, pinning the black ant. A possible spot for the second white beetle to spawn here. And the only black ant that's mobile is pinning a white ant, so if the black ant moves, it will free up a white ant. shrink this just a bit so we've got more of it on the screen. And here we go, a, a pen replacement, freeing up the, potentially freeing up the black ant. And this is always one of the dangers when you pen your last mobile ant allowed the white beetle to climb up. So with two beetles atop the hive, Judoka is going to have a very hard time defending this one. Let's see if he can pull this one out. He may need to be starting to be concerned about getting his beetles into play. In a defensive position. And I hear noises going on in the kitchen, so my wife is making dinner, so I may have to take a brief uh, hiatus from the live stream, leaving it on, but putting my Be Right Back note up. And so Chidoka is looking for the defense. Okay. Now, if you noticed, he initially placed it there and then shifted it over to there. And this is a very instructive note here on that. One may ask, why, why did he do that? Because if white were to spawn a grasshopper here and the black ant were there, the white grasshopper would be threatening to pin the black ant. That would be one possible reason why uh, Judoka chose the elbow pin rather than the inline pin. So we have the Lone Badger, Jonas Cronander, Granitar MC, and Metal Russo have introduced themselves in the lobby in the chat room. So make sure you drop a note there. Let me know who you are and where you're from. Uh, we've got at least one new visitor. I think Granitar and Metal Russo are both new. Ah. And the white beetle advances forward. 
and Frasco is the first player qualifying for the win by covering over by covering the black queen. Now the black pill bug can only warp out bugs from these two spots can no longer warp out the queen. And of course, there's a very good chance the white beetle is headed out to actually pin the I'm sorry, cover the black pill bug. And of course, one of the things that you're always doing as a, as a hive player is counting bugs. Do you have enough to win? Does your opponent have enough to beat you? So right now, White only needs three bugs. He's got two beetles atop the hive, and he's got a mobile, a mobile ant. So it looks like Judoka may be defending with the beetle. And he did. He brought in his first beetle in a defensive position. So if the white beetle moves out to cover the pill bug, then the black beetle will be able to immediately cover the, recover the white beetle. So of course, one of the things white's going to do is try to get a bug into this spot fairly quickly because that would block the black spider. Black spider is not a very good defensive bug. If this were a ladybug, mosquito, or beetle, it could jump out. Welcome Sylvan Franklin from Vermont. We appreciate you joining us today. So if you were Frasco, would you bring a spider to here? and move it to there? Would you bring the spider to here, move it to there? Or would you bring a grasshopper into here and jump it to there? And of course, whatever white brings in, if black defends by, oh, that's very interesting. Frasco elected not to attack, but pin the black beetle. And of course, there's a direct drop spot right here, so that is also, but if it, but if white direct drops a bug here, then this white spider no longer has an angle of attack. So Judoka's fighting to get that ant free. Okay. Okay, bear with me while I get rid of all of these unwanted. Okay, so I guess that's a sign my channel has made it when I'm getting hit by porn spam. So let's get back to the game. Let me.
So let's see what's going on here. We've got I apologize for all this spam that's coming in. Welcome from Artin from from Iran. So Jonas is asking, is there a force win? I think there is here. So Frasco attacked with the, oh, very interesting. Forming the ring, but that's a last ditch effort because white breaks the ring from there. Yep, and Frasco, so I, you're right, Jonas. And it happened very quickly. So congratulations to Frasco on winning game one. So let's see if we can open the chat window and see if they're going to play another one. Let's get the lobby open. Judoka is asking if there's time for another. So Frasco got the his beetle atop the hive, qualified for the win very quickly. That spider, the black spider, proved to be a, a, a very, very poor defender uh, and was easily blocked in. Okay, they're going to take a five-minute break. And play again. So that was exciting. So bear with me a second while I do some things here to get rearranged to go with game two. Make it a private room. No track mice. Using text. Okay. Shut down. And then we'll wait for them to see which room they're going to play in next. So congratulations to Frasco. Of course, Frasco is the, uh, he has a, a Facebook page called Hive the Boardless Game. He also started the Discord server Hive the Boardless Game. Uh, links down below. For, for both of those items. So Gasan Al Masareka. I played my first in-person game of Hive in years yesterday. I think Gas Gasan has been has joined my my uh, live streams before. Pandemic's been harsh. Yes, it has. Rwada Ion says. I wonder if that might be Jan, the Romanian juggler. 
Wow, Judoka didn't stand a chance in this one. That's rare. And Magical Steve said hello. So welcome all of you all for, for joining. We'll be looking for uh, game two here very shortly. And once we get a, that figured out which room they're going to be in, I'll get it open and we will be going from there. Again, we've got a two minute del time delay. I don't think that either one of these players, Frasco or Judoka, would join the time the live stream. And I think both of these players are actually better than me. So listening to my commentary may not be a benefit to them. So but the two minute live the two minute time delay does make it a little bit more difficult for a player to join the live stream and use my commentary to their benefit. You know, what we can do is we can do a quick review of the game here. There, ha Well, let's, let's first talk about the, the tournament, the 2022 Hive Online World Championship Tournament. This year's invitation only, 32 of the top players. And this year we're doing a little bit differently. We've tried round robins in the past, but we tried them early on and they didn't work out well because some of the, the players were not as committed and that created issues. But this year with the invitation only with 32 players, we have eight groups of four players in each group. And then the top two from each group moves on to the knockout rounds. So in this group, the group that is playing today, it's Frasco and Judoka, and then Kess 777 and Marco 60. Kess 777 is Eugen from Ukraine. Excuse me, I had to push my mute button. And Marco 60 is one of the French players. Let's see, I should know Marco's name. I apologize, Marco, I can't think of it. So that's one of the one of the, the groups that I label the, the group of death because of the quality of the players. The other group of death is group A with Quadlobet, Stefanzo, KP3, and Reno Saros. But Quadlobet and Stefanzo are moving right along in that one. And so we watch, we'll be watching to see where, what room they open up and try to get it joined up as well. And Gassan says, I've been here before, yes, and I won that game thanks to your teachings. Well, I appreciate that. Glad to hear that. Of course, my goal is to help you play Hive like a champion. And of course, now I'll take a take a moment here. Let's turn. We'll turn room eighty off. And don't forget, there's a link down below. I did publish a book, "Play Hive Like a Champion." It's on its second edition. I'm working on the third edition as we speak. What I've learned is I can say in sixty percent, forty percent fewer words the same thing that was said before. So that's what I'm working on, editing that down. And of course, there's also a link down below. If you want to help support the channel you can buy me a coffee and you can see scrolling across the bottom of the live stream are some of my most recent uh, supporters on buy me a coffee so we're waiting for that judoka and frasco to determine where they're going to be playing their next game which room of course my the the group that i'm in has chigi me, Max Shark, and Naya, again, another strong group. Max Shark and I played our first match and drew it two games apiece. I won the first two, but couldn't close it out. Max came back and won games three and four. And then Chigi won all four of his games against Naya, and then won all four of his games against Max Shark. So uh, Chigi looks like he's advancing onward. And then it will be interesting to see what I can do against when I play him.
So we're waiting for them to determine where they're going to play. We've got lots of people joining in the lobby. Let me get the lobby open again. I'll turn that off. Oops, wrong button. I'll turn the buy me a coffee off, turn the lobby back on. And we'll watch the lobby to see where they're going to be playing. And there's been a lot of exciting hive going on so far in this first round, first round of the round robin, which just ended this week. The second round is actually starting in this match here between the top two players in round in group D is actually the round three matchup it was set up this year so that uh, round one was at just two weeks to play round two, four weeks to play round three, six weeks to play, trying to encourage people not to wait till the last minute, because in theory, there are some situations where knowing the results of other matches would determine how you would need to play in your in your match. And so we set it up that way uh, on the, the tournament committee. So Frasco is also a member of the tournament committee. Nevir or Never is on the committee, as is Eucalyx and uh, Christian Galeas, playing under the name Judoka, current world champion. I'm sorry, playing under the name Quadlibet, current world champion. Judoka was a member of the committee, but he's working so hard on his book, he hasn't had time. And so he dropped out of the committee. So let's see where they're getting ready to play. Got to keep an eye on them here. Oh my goodness, they've already joined up in room three. I apologize, I missed that, so... While I was talking, they joined up in room three. So let's go ahead and get going here. Again, both players st started with a ladybug. This time, Judoka is playing white. Once I get caught up, I'll see if I can get the the live room open for you guys. Let's get the lobby turned off. Thank you, Gassan. Try to keep these porn spam out of here. Okay, let's see if I can get the live the live game up here. So we're in room three. Oh, not doing so well here, guys. Sorry about that.
Okay, I finally got it. That's what happens when you have an old guy like me trying to do these things. So let me move this back down over to here. Okay, very good. Finally got it up and going. Sorry about that delay. So let's see if we can get caught up here. Pill bug in there. Black ant one. Vahid Masmalayev, hello, welcome. Okay, so let's see if we can get caught up here. Uh, make sure I've got, yep, I've got the live going there. And so again, the ants are coming out early. And Judoka has attacked early with a mosquito. And he is going to start a beetle attack. Okay, so they're moving quite moving along quite well here, quite quickly here. So let's see the the black ant pinned the white beetle as expected. It looks like Judoka might be bringing in another ant. With Frasco winning game one, Judoka is going to be pressing here in game two to win as white and not wanting to go down two games, nothing in a four game match. Let's move this over here a bit. Okay, uh, Frasco decides to defend with a spider. Of course, what that does is that the spider is in position one, two, three to pin the white mosquito. If perchance the white ant were to come to here, then the black spider could pin the, the mosquito there. If the white ant doesn't move, the black spider could move out here and pin the white ant. Perfect example of an ambiguous spider, another term that was coined by 
uh, judoka, Joe Schultz, in his book, The Canon of High Groundwork. There's a link down below as well. If you haven't purchased that book already, that's a great book. Uh, and if you purchase it through my YouTube channel, I get a little tiny piece of it. I've got to look into how I can... How I can keep those spam chats from coming up. Well, it looks like looking outside that maybe we missed our thunderstorm this afternoon. So my thunderstorm alert, I'm going to take it down. But it is Florida, so you never know. We could have another. Um, I can, I'll answer this one over here in the chat. Vahid asks, is there an engine for analysis at Hive, something like Stockfix for chess? And the answer is no. We know that there are some people working on that. Uh, those of us in the community have mixed feelings regarding that. Because right currently, there's no good way to stop someone if, for example, a Hive Stockfish came out then there's no good way to stop someone from using that while they're playing in the tournament. So right now we just somewhat rely on the honesty of the players that they're not using uh, other, other sources to help them. That's why I have a time delay on my live stream. Uh, and even though there are some AI out there uh, Jib, that's uh, Jean-Baptiste Chaubet from France, uh, wrote an extremely good uh, app for Android that is very challenging, but still not up to, to par with the top players in the world. Not like Stockfish, which very definitely could beat the, the top players. I have to keep an eye on the chat because we do have a lot of corn coming in. So, and if you notice, as quite regularly happens, uh, generally one player is on the attack while the other player is defending. And if the defend the player that's defending can hold out, there comes a, a time in the match in the game when the attacker his attack falters, and then the counter attack comes. So Judoka is massively attacking with the Mosquito and Beetle. So we'll see if he can get his attack to come through. So Jack Spearing says, recently had the pleasure of losing twice in a row in real world games against Brasco and can confirm they are very good. Yes, Frasco is an extremely good player. Okay, so Judoka brings in a Grasshopper. Because if the Grasshopper jumps across to here, then that would free, that would free the Mosquito to climb up. Of course, most of you know, understand how Hive has played. Mosquitoes gain whatever movement from the bugs that they're touching. So will Frasco use his ant to stop that mosquito, or will he let the mos let the grasshopper jump and then stop the mosquito? He could use that opportunity to bring in another ant. I 
because right now both players still have an ant in reserve. Okay, interesting. So Frasco brings in a, okay, and then immediately he goes ahead and jumps in. Or not yet, he's looking at it. And he did. Now, the most likely the response would be to go ahead and pin the mosquito. But might he go ahead and warp the queen away? That would be another possibility. Because right currently, again, the most likely way to qualify for the win is to uh, cover the opposing queen. And that's why beetles are so important. Okay, and so Frasco elected to pin the mosquito. Now, if judoka wanted to spend his ant to do it he could bring the ant to here and then nothing can stop the mosquito from coming up but that would be sacrificing an ant to get the mosquito up Another po possible opportunity, if time is not of the essence, would be grasshopper to there and then grasshopper to here. Okay. But he's looking at pinning the ant with the grasshopper. And I will try to keep an eye out on my on the chat window to answer any questions that you might have. And, oh, my wife is making dinner smell so good, so I maybe have to take a break here momentarily to go out with her for a few minutes. And so that's what Judoka did, was jumped out and pinned the, the ant. So now if you're, if you are black, that's Frasco, and you're on the defensive, you're going to, you're asking yourself, where can my opponent place another beetle to come in to attack? Okay, Brasco brought in a spider. And I noticed that Dave Dyer joined the, the uh, spectator, spectating the game and welcomed Dave Dyer to the, to the uh, spectating. Dave's the uh, administrator at Board Space and we owe a lot to him for uh, keeping the Board Space going and helping us play hive here on board space and it's very interesting because if you notice like that spider i had to do a double take he's actually got the interface set up so that it doesn't spot the bugs in exactly the right 
perfect spot makes it look like it's on a real table where they're not perfectly aligned. Just one of the little details that Dave did in his interface. Okay, white spider comes in. So if the black spider goes to there, it doesn't. White spider cannot pin the black ant, but the white spider is threatening to pin the black beetle. So will Frasco climb up with the beetle looking to defend? More active defense by moving forward this direction. Threatening to move up and cover the mosquito or the beetle. Or will he attack Attack with the beetle. No doubt he's checking out his options. Let's take a quick look at the time. Judoka's at 12 minutes and change. Frasco just passed the 14 minute mark, so neither of them are in time trouble yet. I'm thinking that that white spider placement by Judoka is going to force Frasco to move his beetle. No, he didn't. He moved the spider and very quickly the white spider pinned the black beetle. Okay, so I'm getting called to dinner, so I'll mute and be right back.
<laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> sorry. So that was a very interesting placement of the the ant here that can't get pinned and it can get warped away by the pill bug. So a lot has happened since I stepped away. Uh, we'll go back to here. The, the black beetle getting warped to here is a good defensive position because if the white beetle moves forward, obviously the black beetle can cover it. If the white beetle moves this direction, then the ladybug can jump out, leaving the white beetle pinned. Make sure I'm up to date here. I think I am. So black still, ha and then the black ant goes in, blocking in the white ant. Remember, there's a two minute delay, so I have unmuted already but you all won't see it for a minute. Thanks, Wesley. Thanks, Vahid. So I appreciate you letting me know that I am muted, but that I, I am not muted now, and so hopefully you'll be hearing me here very shortly. So let's get back over here to watch what's going on. Okay, so does Judoka have an opportunity? Judoka is rapidly running out of bugs. Let's see the... So Judoka may find himself in a plain defense right at the moment. Now here's an interesting situation with Brasco. What would happen if you place the, the beetle here forming the ring? White cannot break the ring and the black beetle could move forward immediately. Of course, in my, in, in my book, Play Hive Like a Champion, I made the comment that rings are bad. And then later on, we added to that, except when they're good. Because top quality players know how to use a ring to their benefit. And this might be a situation here. Brasco, of course, in order to to win is going to have to qualify for the win. Getting one of his beetles over is the most likely way to do that. So Judoka might be looking to pin the black ant and then warp the white ant out. Of course, the black beetle, I mean, in theory, the black beetle could come in somewhere like over here or over here and do the long walk, the long march. But that would take quite a while.
Okay. Now that's interesting. The grasshopper comes in there. What's his plan? If he jumps to there, okay, that would free this ant. Interesting. Definitely go up in the ant game. So let's take a look at that. Okay. Yep, so that's what Frasco did, was he jumped in with the grasshopper, making the ring here. Oh, interesting. He goes ahead and attacks. That means that this ant can't move away, because that would free the mosquito. If black doesn't break the ring, the white mosquito climbs up. So the black grasshopper may be forced to move again. Obviously doesn't want to go that way because that leaves the black ant pinned. If he goes this way, that frees the beetle. So he's going to have to go this way. What happens when, the, when he goes that direction? And that might just be well, very interesting turn of events here. I was thinking that ring was a was beneficial to Frasco, but it looks like it might be beneficial to Judoka. But the big question is, even if Judoka gets the mosquito atop the hive, does Judoka have enough win enough bugs to win? with a good defensive beetle in position as well. So let's take a look here. I think we've decided the grasshopper can't jump either one of these ways, so the grasshopper is going to have to go to here. And then the ant can get warped out. So if the ant gets warped out, the threat, of course, is the ant coming to here, freeing the mosquito. So he didn't. He went ahead and attacked, letting the mosquito climb up. But there may not be enough white bugs available to win. And I've, uh, in watching games, particularly in the board space open, where the the players are not quite the same caliber as those the final 32, I see regularly where players miss an attack in three or four moves to take eight or nine to win, and that's one of the one of the key points for the top players is they can see those victories know how to count them and you only have to win by one tempo so they know how to to know when to begin their attack and so frasco probably was looking at that very carefully and realized that even if the mosquito goes up and the grasshopper jumps to there that 
white may not have enough bugs to win. And another interesting thing is the white mosquito doesn't have ant power. So if the ant gets warped out, it immediately is going to get pinned. If the ant doesn't get warped out, then black is going to attack with the beetle. Okay, that's interesting. He pins this ant, knowing that if that ant moves, then this ant is free. And of course the white no bug could warp the ant out and then free the white ant. So what if the beetle comes in this way? Nope, he brings the beetle in an attacking position there. And Judoka has no way to keep the Beetle from coming to top the hive. Okay, so he warps the ant away, which frees up this ant. But still, the black beetle climbs up. Yeah. One of the ways that you can qualify for the win is by surrounding the pill bug so the pill bug doesn't have any places to warp the black queen. Okay, interesting. The black grasshopper jumps in, which blocks in the white ant. which also creates a fill and allows the, the black ladybug to join the attack. And the white ladybug is under there. Interesting, we keep the ant pinned, freeing the pill bug. Oh, very interesting because now with the beetle attacking, the ladybug doesn't have the ability to pin the beetle. But is white going to be able to have enough bugs to win? He might might have. What a turn of events. The black grasshopper may be forced to jump back out to here to keep the ladybug in place.
Yep, that's what he had to do. The grasshopper had to jump back out here to keep the ladybug in place. Now the white beetle. Now the black ladybug is threatening to jump out, leaving the beetle pinned, so the white beetle is going to have to do something. If he goes to here, can he immediately get pinned? Black will need three bugs, has one in reserve. Doesn't look like any other way to get the bugs needed. So what if white goes to there? Okay, if white goes to there, then to there, and the, the beetle comes up. So, of course, black is threatening with the beetle. Yep. That almost had to happen that way. Because you don't want the black beetle to cover your, your beetle. And now white is threatening to go to here and free that beetle. Okay, now, is Frasco's count going to be good enough? We're coming to a very quick conclusion here. Both, neither of them are in time trouble. This defending beetle by Frasco could be a, a, a key, key piece. So Judoka is going to have to sacrifice this beetle. This beetle is going to have to cover the, the pill bug. And when that happens, that happens. And then white needs three bugs and only has two easy ones. Yep, this grasshopper, the one grasshopper in reserve can be direct dropped or dropped into position to attack, although there's no, no easy spawn point for the grasshopper to come in with an angle of attack. But he's going to have to move forward with the beetle because the danger is it if he wanted to defend, he could do that. Welcome, Christopher Scott from North Carolina. I guess that's what NC. It could be New Caledonia, I guess.
So black has a, 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 a path to victory. That's one, two, three, four, five. We just have to make sure that he doesn't free a piece that can take the kill shot if that's the scenario. Brasco's defense is going to center around that beetle right there. Excuse me. I have my dinner right over here, so I don't think, I, if, even if they play a game three, I don't think I'll be watching it. So now that's another interesting scenario where you, you can run up this pill bug could warp the queen out to here if the queen if it ha if it could and white doesn't have the ability to surround it if white brought in a grasshopper here and the queen were warped out to there if white had a bug to get to there that could stop that that could defeat the uh, neutralize the pill bug that way but white doesn't have a free ant anywhere. Yep, I don't think that White's going to have enough bugs to, to win. All the white ants are tied down, pinned, useless for both defense and attack. Let's take a look at timing. Judoka is approaching the two-minute mark. Brasco still has five minutes, and of course, you get 20 seconds added each time you make a move. So if I had to venture a guess, it looks like Frasco is going to take a, a commanding 2-0 lead. Ah, interesting. Okay, so let's assume that Frasco where is that grasshopper going? Oh, is it planning on pinning the ant? That was interesting. Now white definitely doesn't have enough bugs to, to win. Does black have enough bugs to win?
Judoka is down to a minute four, 13 and counting. Interesting. Okay. Remember that rings are bad except when they're good. Jumping out to there. The only bug Frasco has that can break the ring is the is the ladybug. Okay, he's not concerned. He's going to go ahead and bring the grasshopper to a direct drop with the grasshopper. Now Black needs three three bugs. Has two ants and a beetle if he can get them all into kill spots. Interesting. Okay. Okay, so this is an interesting scenario here. Now, if black blocks, Now black also has this grasshopper which can jump to here which frees the ladybug and that's what he did so white uh, judoka doesn't have the method of getting stopping e both of these ants okay so he goes ahead and attacks Nope, he doesn't. Again, complicating things. This is one of the, in in Joe's book, The Canon of Hive Groundwork, that's one of the things that he talks about is complications. And that's what rings created, complications. So he formed this ring and black cannot break it. But Judoka is down to 15 seconds. So what happens if he attacks to there? Yep, he's got three three spots to fill. So he could go there, one of the either one of the ants to there, and then the beetle takes the kill shot. So I frankly don't see how white can defend.
And one of my recommendations to new players is to never, never resign. Not because your opponent may not execute the victory, because if you're playing a good opponent, they will. But don't resign because watching a top quality player execute a, a, a victory in situations like this is very instructive. So while I'm talking, something's going on here. So that grasshopper went to there, and now that ladybug attacked, and now this grasshopper attacked. And Judoka's down to less than 30 seconds. He's 20 seconds and counting. So you can complicates things by going to there which now the ladybug will be able to go to there and it's over nope he Takes the setup shot with the beetle, and now he's got two ants can get into that to take that kill shot. Well, congratulations, Frasco. Beat Judoka in both games. Judoka says, nice game again, and Frasco goes, OMG, he can't believe he's beaten the two-time world champion. Judoka has beaten him too much, two times. Too much emotions for today, aha, says Frasco. Of course, Frasco is in the UK. He's a native Italian living in the UK. He actually is working part-time for John Yanni from Gen 42 Games, the designer of Hive, so we're all jealous of that. So it's it is approaching midnight over there. And I think he had, Frasco says, I wish this was the knockout phase. <laughs> so congratulations to Frasco, that's Francesco Salerno for both victories today. And I appreciate everybody joining for the live stream today. Uh, I hope they're not going to be playing a third game because I am going to have to call it quits for today. So let me turn that off, get the lobby back open. Just in case they're having conversation in the lobby, which they're not. And so congratulations to Frasco. Judoka says, have fun on vacation. So. He says, I'll be ready for you when you return. So they're playing just the two games today. They have quite a bit of time yet to play the final two games. So congratulations to Frasco for winning both games today. And I appreciate all of you for joining me this evening uh, on this live stream. And I'll be live streaming as often as I can, uh, as circumstances will uh, allow. And as always, I'm here helping you play Hive like a champion. And let's do a couple things here real quick. We are going to turn out this room. I thought. And again, don't forget, link to my book down below, and if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. So as always, I'm here helping you play Hive Like a Champion. Be watching uh, for, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you know when, uh, when I do have an opportunity to live stream. 
I'll be live streaming as often as I can. And so until next time, this is Randy Ingersoll signing off. And I hope you all have a great evening. And may your hive games turn out well.